is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth being censored. In a recent patch to Remake, it seems like the design of Tifa was changed in certain scenes, specifically the flashback scenes to Nibelheim that take place five years prior to the events of the game, where a black undershirt was added to Tifa's outfit covering cleavage. Now, this has sparked a bit of a resurgence in conversation surrounding Square Enix and the topic of censorship. Give me a second, I'm still sick here. Dude, someone casted bio on me, I swear. But back to censorship. This is a hot topic in the games industry nowadays, so let's dive into it. So, well, ground rules. What even is censorship? Well, I typed in Google, and it regurgitated out from the Oxford languages that censorship is the suppression or prohibition of any parts of books, films, news, etc. that are considered obscene, politically unacceptable, or a threat to security. Kind of a broad definition, but when you read that definition, I think it's fair to qualify the change to Tifa as censorship on the grounds of the obscene part. However, I'd argue that in terms of severity, and how up in arms people probably should be in regards to this, I don't personally care about it, but what I do care about is the overall topic of censorship. Context is everything in my opinion, and it's quite normal, especially within the confines of internet discussion, to disregard the notion of context and to paint every situation with a broad brush ignoring any extraneous details. However, with this specific scene of Tifa, she's 15, so yeah, it's kind of weird that this was even the original design to begin with, and I can't say that I'm upset about covering her up a little bit. So let's talk about censorship, and let's talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, because funnily enough, one of the biggest talking points about this game in the last week or so is in regards to Tifa specifically. Specifically, a swimsuit that she wears when yet I assume in Costa del Sol, and it's clear and obvious fan service. And I talked about fan service not too long ago and how the topic of fan service can kind of sidestep a lot of conversations away from a discussion about the actual quality of something and just in terms of focusing in on like internet discourse that doesn't really have any grounds or basis in reality. And I think if you're going to look at Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and look at this particular aspect of Tifa with the whole cowboy suit from earlier, and say, oh, they're trying to censor the sexuality out of Final Fantasy VII and take away fan service. Well, if you see that beach scene, clearly not. It's just that one scene because, again, most likely the context of she's 15 freaking there, that scene, it makes sense to, you know, change the outfit. And one of the most funny takes I've seen in regards to this whole situation is in regards to, well, Forspoken, a game that wasn't really well received. I didn't even play it because at no point in its development cycle or marketing did it ever look particularly appealing to me. But the joke going around is that Square Enix saw the, well, what's the opposite of success of Forspoken and said, well, let's change paths here in regards to Tifa's, like, you know, swimsuit scene. And yeah, sure, it's kind of funny, but let's also not pretend that Final Fantasy itself as a franchise at any point here has, like, shied away from fan service in recent years, right? I mean, you had Cindy from Final Fantasy XV. Even in Final Fantasy VII Remake, you had characters like Scarlet. And, like, yeah, it was part of her character and part of her charm and the humor surrounding her that she treated her, like, the soldiers surrounding her and her bodyguards as chairs and, like, pets. Had a really low cut top and all that. And I've said it before, fan service doesn't make a game bad. And I feel a lot of the times in regards to fan service, people act like it's a detraction. As if your game, just by the simple notion of having fan service, lowers the bar or lowers the quality of the overall product, when I just don't think that's the case. I think it's perfectly okay to admit that these games have fan service and that they're also really good games, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you have to have one and can't have the other or that fan service is a mock of shame for a game or whatever. But I think this also offers a good segue into an overall conversation about censorship in the video games industry. And a lot of the points we're going to be talking about can be expanded to like movies and TVs and all that, especially in regards to streaming platform, as I imagine over the course of the next several years, these streaming platforms or, you know, rental services like Game Pass or PS Plus will continue to propagate and expand, that some games are changed post-release or later on for for whatever reason, whether it's censoring dialogue, or removing a scene, or whatever. Heck, even in Final Fantasy VII Remake, apparently in that patch we just talked about, they also changed Aerith's last line of dialogue in the entire game. Changing the line from being about, I miss it, the steel sky.
sky to some version of this sky, I hate it, which in my opinion it's a really unnecessary change. I don't care if it's more closer to the Japanese translation, because in English, I just think it doesn't hit as hard. I miss it. The steel sky has a sense of poetry to it, making you think back to how it was to be in the slums of Midgar, where the sky you saw was, well, the steel sky above you. And just having the final line of the game now being, I hate it. It sounds less impactful and sentimental, almost whiny and complainy. And if this was just always the line, then it'd be like here or there, but when you actively change a line this close to the release of the next game, it just makes me scratch my head going, well, why would you do this? Like, what is this adding to the overall experience other than making the writing arguably worse? Like, it's not a groundbreaking change or anything, but it's these little moments that just leave me scratching my head going, well, why would you do that? And then in regards to censorship on the whole, I feel a lot of conversation in regards to this topic kind of goes in directions that just end up in endless cycles of debate online when in actuality the way I feel about it is I'm a grown ass man, I don't need someone else to tell me what I can and cannot consume, right? And this isn't necessarily in regards to the Tifa scene from earlier, we're gonna like expand this to an overall discussion, right? Like I don't need western releases or whatever editions or versions of games to come out where they feel the need to censor something or change a particular subject matter or line of dialogue or imagery or cover something up because we can't handle it or that we shouldn't consume it or whatever. Like if it's about the previous case with Tifa where she's 15 in that scene, yeah fine I don't care. But if we're talking about a line of dialogue or a story beat or a particular subject matter and you want to like uh, sanitize that or scrub it out, that feels more like an insult to my intelligence and my individuality more than anything, as if you somehow believe I cannot contextualize a moment in the story for whatever reason. A lot of this, you can actually like double back this conversation to like Persona as well, with games like Persona 4, where those games, and that game particularly, tackles a lot of subject matter that is rather controversial, and it tackles it in controversial ways. But I don't need someone coming in to change that piece of media because they feel that I'm not equipped, whatever, emotionally or intellectually, to handle that piece of media. Like, sure, some humor may not have aged all that well in the modern year, but let's not pretend that it's going to somehow, like, completely change who I am. I've always found conversations in regards to censorship of this nature to be kind of cringe in a lot of ways, and to also rely quite heavily on the idea and the assumption that I just can't think for myself. Sure, there's a lot of idiots out there, let's be fair here. There's a lot of people that will look at a game like Persona 4 and look at the characters of Naoto and like Kanji and play through those stories and completely miss the point. You can't write to please everyone and you can't write something to make sense for everyone because at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there that just aren't going to get it. And I don't think every piece of media out there needs to like bow down and placate to those ideas, to the lowest common denominator here. I'm perfectly capable of contextualizing pieces of media for the time or being able to understand nuance or that things and opinions and feelings and types of humor change over time. I don't need someone else to come in and tell me, oh no, you can't handle this anymore, we're gonna change it for you, like screw off. Don't tell me what I'm capable or not capable of consuming, or what I can and cannot find funny. It's just weird behavior, and there's like higher and holier than thou attitude, as if somehow you're a good arbiter to judge what is consumer friendly and what isn't. If I play something, if I consume a piece of media, I want to see the original vision, what was intended, flaws and all. And if there's something that can be improved on in the future, sure, we can have that conversation. I think having an adding context is fine if you want, but it's like these streaming services where for like episodes of TV shows, they just take an episode off the air or off the streaming platform for whatever reason. It's like, why are you doing this? Because it's controversial? Like, I get the idea, I get the notion, it's just... I don't know, I can't shake the feel that it just feels like an insult to my intelligence. That I'm somehow not emotionally equipped to be able to deal with this topic of conversation or this person or whatever. It feels hand-holdy and it feels as if we're just being treated like children. I find it off-putting more than anything. And if you want to make an argument, what about the children? We have age ratings for games for a reason. Like, this already exists. Like, utilize these things. Let's not pretend that they don't exist. 
if I'm playing a rated M game, I don't want to see a change made because what about the children? That entire th way of thought should have ended when the game was rated M. It's also like when we hear about a lot of these modernizations that are made to remakes or whatever for these older games. Like that one article I saw before in regards to the Witcher 1 remake and that they're going to remove one aspect of the game, right? Or change, drastically change one aspect of the game. I forget the exact nomenclature they use, by the way. Don't quote me there. It's the trading cards you get for when you have sex. And for each new woman you have sex with in that game, you get a new trading card. Like, we all know that's almost certainly what they're talking about. And like, yeah, it's a weird thing. But if you're making a game, if you're remaking a game, then remake the game. I'm perfectly capable and, well, sound of mind enough to understand, yeah, if a new game's coming out, maybe we're not gonna have that. But don't come onto the scene and try and act as if you're doing a service to the games industry as a whole or whatever by claiming you're going to modernize the experience to suit a modern audience. If it's a product of its time, then if you really feel the need to, put a disclaimer at the beginning of the game or whatever. But don't come here as if you're holier than thou, and that you're some moral arbitrator to be able to perfectly judge what is or is not appropriate. It's weird. It's simply weird. And I feel this conversation can get sidetracked in a lot of ways because some of these individual examples, when you look at them as an individual, they may not be that important on the grand scheme of it all, right? Like, I imagine a remake of The Witcher 1 can be perfectly enjoyable from beginning, middle, and end without that trading card system, right? Like, Witcher 1 has a lot of other issues that need to be, like, sorted out and streamlined and smoothed over to make it a more enjoyable game because the game is simply aged in a lot of ways, like, mechanically speaking. And some people will simply go, well, why are you kicking up a stink over, the, like, the one trading card system? Or why are you kicking up a stink over this, like, one particular aspect of it? I feel more so than anything, it's not necessarily about that one example, it's more so about the principle behind the matter and setting precedent and that the idea that these modernizations need to happen to begin with. I feel it's really demeaning to pretend as if I can't contextualize something for the time that it originally came out in. As if I don't have the mental willpower or fortitude to be able to consume something and then not change my entire, you know, personality and way of being just because I consumed a piece of media. Like, how weak do they think a lot of people are? Like, yeah, there's a lot of weird people on the internet, but you're not gonna change them. And while a lot of them can be very vocal on the internet, I don't think they're a majority speaking. Dude, one day I'll be able to speak normally without this sickness. Oh my god. I need to chug water. Give me a second. I think in recent months, there is some sign of optimism here in a lot of ways. Where it just feels like people, I wouldn't call it waking up, but just like realizing that, hey, wait a minute. Maybe this isn't what we want en masse, and maybe things should be a little bit different. I think the tides are starting to change in regards to this topic, and I hope they do, right? I want good games, and I if we do a remake or something in regards to these older games, I want that older vision to still be preserved, make the game better and all that, but I don't want the reason for a change to happen to be that they don't think that I should be allowed to consume it like this, or that we need to modernize this for a modern audience. Because in a lot of ways, we've heard that buzzword and those buzz phrases be pitted around a lot, and here's where I'm coming from. When it comes to, like, advertising in regards to censorship going, like, being front and center. When the main topic of advertisement in regards to something is that you modernized it instead of showing a lot of cool changes and gameplay loops and all that and talking about the heart and soul of what made the game originally so good and how you preserve that to the modern day when i hear this has been changed for a modern audience i just grow skeptical about the overall quality of the game as if you have nothing else to advertise it's not a perfect thing but like it's a general rule of thumb i operate with you gotta always wait for trailers and gameplay and reviews and all that to be to be really certain to be a smart consumer. So yeah, I think I'm starting to ramble, so I'm gonna call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you all for tuning in. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this subject matter as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions and to hear your perspectives. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody, until we meet again!